Ladies and gentlemen and pen peeps of all ages, hey, it's Troy here. I want to share with you yet another pen. And this is one that I added to my collection a little while ago um, for Father's Day and shortly thereafter for my birthday. I was given a couple of gift cards for eBay. So um, that's pretty much a safe bet for me because I guarantee I'm going to find something on eBay that I want. So the two cards, gift cards put together help me buy this. This is approximately you know, 80, 75 to 80 years old. It is a Waterman, a vintage Waterman. It is a nurse's pen, uh, circa 1940s. And this is one that I've seen before. I mean, I've seen these online. I have seen them at pen shows. And I decided to go ahead and pick one up because I saw a decent uh, deal on one. So here it is in my collection. This particular pen came out of another collector's estate and fortunately it did not need to be restored or anything. It wrote uh, just as it was when I got it. It was still in really decent shape. So a nurse's pen. What is a nurse's pen? Well, uh, a series of pens that is that were marketed primarily at nurses. There were doctor sets in the 40s and 50s. And usually the doctor sets were, you know, a little bigger, and uh, they were uh, usually all white, uh, pen, pencil, and also a thermometer holder that looked just like one of the pens. Well, you had pretty much the same thing for nurses, only they were a little smaller, because typically nurses were female, and generally women like the smaller pens for A, smaller hands, uh, B, for purse or, um, to be able to put in a pocketbook or a purse. So, um, the nurse's set. This is not a complete set. This was the pen only. So, nurse's pens. Why a fountain pen way back then? Well, number one, <laughs> it is the primary uh, pen. But also, in addition to that, uh, when you have, let's say, three shifts of nurses that would work, because you have to have 24 coverage, let's say, in a hospital, uh, each shift would have their own color ink so when you wrote on charts and yes all charts back then were still handwritten in the 1940s and 1950s it's not as if they had a computer system then um, you would have let's say first shift was black and the second shift would be a green ink and anything recorded on the third shift the overnight shift might have been a uh, red ink and sometimes um, the top of the pen here the uh, the finial right here would be a different color so, and could indicate the color of ink on the inside so you would know that that particular pen belonged to a first shift or a second shift or a third shift nurse. So um, when I saw this I just said alright let's get it. I didn't have a nurse's pen in my collection. I only got it just to add to the collection. Um, actually in the DC pen show um, last uh, within the last month or so, actually three weeks ago, I saw uh, one collector that was selling off his collection and he had a really nice uh, nurses set there and uh, he had I believe a fountain next to um, one with a thermometer in it and it was uh, still the the off color and they typically came in either white or more this yellowish pearl like you see here and it uh, true to form it does have the waterman's name on the clip it's got that uh, single uh, ring on that cap band and obviously a lever filler from that time period as would be uh, normal and uh, and then basically a somewhat rounded uh, convex tip there and a twist cap you open it up and you've got a nice little number two uh, waterman nib on that thing and yes it's a very flexible nib and this is just small enough where you're going to want to post it so, um, there were two main manufacturers of um, nurse's pens back in the day. So you had Waterman and Esterbrook were the ones who typically uh, would market towards um, nurses and doctors. There is an entire website, by the way, nursespens.com, and some of the pictures that I'm sharing with you here during this video come from that website, whether it's the advertisement um, or a screenshot 
um, I encourage you to go look there. It's not a lot of material there, but it's really neat, really interesting, and it's got some really cool history. Uh, and I do believe that site was uh, created by somebody who, uh, whose mother was a nurse and actually had some nurse's pens. So I just um, thought that was really neat to share. I have been in touch with the individual who owns that site. I did ask for permission to share some of the photos, uh, and he said absolutely, but some of the photos there are also shared by permission. Uh, so so um, there you go. I'm passing along some of the info that I have for that. So I've shared a lot of Waterman pens over the years, um, seen a lot of uh, Waterman pens. I probably have more Watermans uh, in my collection than anything else. Uh, I do enjoy the brand. I enjoy the quality that I'm able to get out of them, and they still write fantastically well. This particular one I'm going to share with you, though, I did have a slight struggle with it in that the tine alignment is just slightly off, given just a slight little scratch when I write with it. And so um, a couple of times I've wrestled with it and tried to change time, tine alignment on it and just get it right back in a perfect alignment. This one's a little... Uh, being a flexible nib for me is just a little challenging and I actually uh, just several days ago was trying it and I still have the black ink. I really need to, to mess with it when it's not inked up. So I got some Waterman black ink in this thing and uh, yeah it's still underneath my fingernails. <laughs> so. Uh, but there you go. All right, so um, what else can I tell you about it? I mean, you can still find Waterman's Nurses Pens. Matter of fact, um, there's a, a group on Facebook that I'm a part of uh, for the weekly, um, uh, the weekly pen show, and somebody had one almost identical to this one being sold for $125, which is more than what I paid for it. Uh, but you know, they are available and out there. And here you can actually still see the imprint here. It's kind of hard to see, uh, and you really need the light mm -hmm. to be just right when you go to see it. Um, but um, because of the color of the pen and the, uh, the imprint in it, I'll try to get some better pictures uh, to be able to share with you on some of the details of this particular pen. But it's still kind of pretty. I mean, it, this pen's 75 to 80 years old, and it's still holding up fairly well. It's not really discolored. As a matter of fact, just about every nurse's pen I've seen, typically I'm not seeing them in white. Typically I'm seeing the nurse's pens in the same uh, yellowish pearl. And this is about the, the color that I'm seeing all the others in. So uh, very common that I have seen. Uh, that's what I know to tell you. So... Um, how does this pen stack up to some other vintage pens, some other Waterman pens, and other even modern pens that you may know? Well, let's show you. So, for the size comparison, let's start with another Waterman. Uh, Waterman 52 from the 1920s with that red ripple, rather than that uh, you know, cell celluloid or acrylic kind of thing here uh, from the 1940s. Now, I shared, too, one of the other uh, manufacturers was Esterbrook that did some nurses' pens. So here's an Esterbrook from, like, the 1940s or so. How about a modern Waterman? Waterman Karen, if you want something to compare it to something modern. And, of course, the ubiquitous and mandated by international treaty, Pilot Metropolitan. And why do I include the Pilot Metropolitan? Because just about everybody has one and can relate to it. I think I forgot to mention, too, that Schaefer's all also had some nurses and doctor's pens that they were marketing as well. Um, but from what I understand, is probably the most popular were Esterbrook and Waterman. Uh, definitely the most I've seen. I have not seen any by Schaefer. I have not seen any by Esterbrook. But I have seen a bunch by Waterman. What can I say? So, let's go uh, and see how this uh, particular baby writes. Like I said, this has got a nice little number two nib on it. It is a flexible nib, and I'm still trying to work on the tine alignment. It's not perfected, so uh, just keep that in mind as I'm writing. So, this is a circa 1940s up through the 50s, these nurses' pens were marketed. And this is a Waterman... Oh, Waterman's to be more uh, appropriate and correct, a nurse's pen. And this does have a nice, beautiful flex nib on it. Look at that. 
I mean, th th <laughs> there's a whole lot of flex in this beautiful nib. And uh, every time I have pulled this pen out and used it, because I was carrying it as my pen of the day just yesterday, as a matter of fact, um, and uh, I've just been very happy with it. It's about as smooth as, as it's going to get for right now if I can perfect that time alignment. And it's it's just, it's not much off, but under a loop, I can tell. Um, and I can tell by writing with it, it could be a wee bit smoother. And uh, that that's how I know. But it's not horribly off. It's acceptable. I'm still willing to use it even as it is. I just want to make it perfect. And uh, my little OCD kicking in since I learned how to do this kind of thing is bothering me. So, anyway. So, this is a very nice writer. I mean, I cannot complain at all. Look at that. I'm just very happy with it. You know, I, no complaints whatsoever. So, for... You know, uh, these are going for, like I said, I, I've seen them online for 125 bucks, mm. uh, about $100 on eBay or so if you can uh, find them. Um, but um, it, if you like a smaller pen, and for me, it is a little smaller than I like. And I am going, I, I really can't deal well with it being that small in my hand. It's just a little too short. So for me, um, that's about perfect right there. I mean, that is a very good size pen in my hand, and I can use this all day, every day. It's lightweight, it's well-balanced, it writes well, and it makes me happy. So there you go, my friends. A nurse's pen. Something to consider for your collection. That's why I share this, is to give you a, a little bit of idea of what's out there, a little bit of the history of what's available, and maybe give you ideas for something to add to your very own personal collection.